Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the front throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that we will not grow weary and lose heart. In this struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have not completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as the father addresses his son. It is, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone goes undisciplined, then you are not legitimate. Not as true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have not had human fathers who discipline us and respect us for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of Spirits and live? They discipline us for a little while as best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful later on. However, it produces a harvest of righteous and peace for those who have trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make levels for your pain feet. Make level paths for your pain feet so that the lame may not be disabled but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone to be holy. Without holiness no one will see the Lord. See it that no one fails short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau 
who for a single meal sold his inheritance as his oldest son. After all, as you know, when we want to be in, inherit this blessing, he was rejected, even though he sought blessing with tears, he could not change what he had done. You have not come to the mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to the darkness, gloom, and storm, to the trumpet blast, or such voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word would be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded even though an animal touches the mountain it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying to Moses, said, I am trembling with fear. But you have not come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jeru Jerusalem, you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels of joyful assembly, to church of the firstborn, whose names have written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of righteous made perfect, to Jesus the Mediator, a new covenant, and to sprinkle blood that speaks a better word than blood of Abel. See to it you do not refuse him who speaks if they did not escape. When they refused him who warned them on the earth, how much less we will if we turn away from who warns us from heaven. And at the time his voice shook the earth but now he promised one more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens the words once more indicated removing from can be shaken that created things so that what not can be shaken may remain Therefore, since we are receiving the kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. All right, so in that particular reading, we heard a lot about discipline and how God actually, because he loves us, he disciplines us. But I want to do right now is I want to define that word discipline because discipline means something specific. It means that God is trying to teach us, because he loves us, he's trying to teach
teach us how to believe. It, 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 it is something that as we move forward in life and that as we have built these uh, these money systems, all the all these things that we, that we call society, all these things that um, have built have been built that actually tempt us and at times lead us away from God. That we lose our ability to believe. We think that. The only thing we we are to do is it, we can do is be a slave to what is in our society, a slave to those images that that the big businesses put in front of us, saying that you're not successful if you don't have this body, if you don't have this amount of money in your bank account, if you're not walking with this credit card, drive this car. All those things, they tear us away from our faith in God. And not necessarily by, by themselves. What, what it is is that we become so centered in the the stuff that we forget and that's where discipline comes in that discipline is there it is that reminder to believe to believe that something is greater than the next car something greater than having that black card in your pocket. Something greater than looking like some supermodel that we saw on YouTube just the other day. That is what discipline is. And how to, how do we get to, to that? Is well trials. We 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 get tried. We have things that happen to us. You saw, heard in, in a previous episode, and I invite you to go back to the Trials and Tribulations, where we had our guest, Laura Lane, explain what Trials and Tribulations could actually mean. And let's, let's remember that, what, how that was defined, what those things are, that God tries us. And that trial is part of the discipline that he gives us. And discipline means the ability to believe. The ability to vision that better life that exists with our faith in God. If we go and we ask a lot of of truly successful people they're successful because not only d did they maybe they made a big pile of money maybe they didn't make a big pile of money but they exist in a world that is full of hope and love that that is mostly what they see is hope and love for people if we go and we ask those people about what tried them and what gave them the faith, that strong faith in them, then we start to understand what those trials that God puts us through are like. The other day, I spoke with a lady. She's a... a <laughs> well, let me describe this lady. If, if you want... want the, um, want to hear about her success her success is that she helps authors get read in the zoom call that we had in her background she had this stack of books sitting there and that stack of books were all of the authors that she helped find a status where 
thousands of people have read their read their work and that to me is amazing but let me tell you about her trial this is her trial and this is and and it leads into what a lot of these mindset coaches out there call a why because what the mindset coaches aren't telling you is is that they had to go through something that taught them that they can do better in life a trial god provides us with trials right okay her trial was when she was two years old her cousins were asked by their grandfather to burn some barn shingles in a barrel and if you ask a nine-year-old and a ten-year-old or or somewhere about that around that age that they get the chance to burn a bunch of wood and stuff in a barrel they're gonna jump at it right well she was the two-year-old cousin and she wanted to play with the big kids and you're gonna have to actually go go find her her documentary I'm gonna invite you to do that go find her documentary it's called still beautiful and you're gonna find out the the, the rest of the the rest of her story um, around that because if there was an accident she did get burnt she got burnt over 75 percent of her body at two years old and that was her trial started there massive surgeries skin grafts but that wasn't the real trial the real trial was her seeing a paper lying on a on a teacher's desk. The teacher took the paper away from one of her her classmates, and it was a drawing of her, and it said Scarface on it. And it was how that made her feel that she realized that. They were poking fun at her. That the kids in her class thought she was ugly and that she was a disgusting person because she had scars all over her. And the next part of her of her trial was was her discovering that one day she looked in the mirror and she decided to look past those scars and when she looked inside of herself while looking in the mirror God had placed something inside of her and underneath all those scars God made sure that she was beautiful and the first thing she noticed was she had beautiful eyes then she realized that she had a beautiful nose it was cute it was beautiful that she had a wonderful shape to her body a very feminine shape and she started to see a beautiful world the trial came the teaching came the faith came and that is what we all have to go through see those trials lead to the discipline that teach us, us to believe discipline means the lessons that teach us to believe discipline is often misused in 
our society as punishment. Punishment is something completely different. And punishment in in when we when we start talking about faith and everything, punishment is something that we probably have self induced. That God because he gives us this free will he allows us to punish ourselves. If you remember that leading back to trials and tribulations with Laura Lane that we had a third word. And that was that third word that actually led us to what the, the the definition of us punishing our, ourselves because the troubles are self-induced trials and tribulations are God testing us troubles was the self-induced because we went off God's path for us. That we stopped listening to God, we turned our back on God, we turned our vision away from God and turned it towards something else. And we found trouble. So if we go back to trials, troubles, and tribulations with Laura Lane, when she told us all that, what she had learned from her faith and her love for God, that we find the troubles and the punishment that goes with those troubles all on our own, God doesn't necessarily provide it. Does he stop us? No, because we have free will. Does he welcome us back when we turn back to our path and we turn back to him and we listen to him? Does he, does he welcome us back? Yes. All the time. His love for us is so great that he welcomes us back every time we stray. So, remember, discipline helps us believe it is the, those lessons that, and those trials and those tribulations that come that teaches us and gives us the discipline to stay on the path. It gives us the faith to see that there's a huge vision of love and a life or an existence with God. Walking with us side by side in a conversation with Him, in a relationship with Him that leads to the most beautiful life and existence possible for us. Let us pray on that. Lord, we have to thank you for the trials that you put us through and maybe the tribulations that they may cause. We have to thank you for the discipline that you give us so that we can find the faith to be with you in eternity. That when we apply all these things to our lives and live in in the faith that you give us that the Holy Spirit is there our brother Jesus is there to help us guide and mediate with you to help us understand what you have in store for us help us as we need to listen and act 
and be with you. Amen.